Okay, we'll be live in a second. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wh wherever you are. Uh, welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 431. Each week uh, we meet here to review the questions and answers given on the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us today, we have David Roseanne. David is a leading internet marketer. He's based in Sussex, in the sunny south of the UK. You can find David at davidrosam.com, R-O-S-A-M. And Masataki Wasa is um, um, based in Wimbledon. Uh, and uh, he uh, is also a Google product expert on the Google uh, uh, AdSense uh, community. And you can find Masataki as webmaster of wasaweb.net, um, W-A-S-A-W-E-B.net. All right, we have 12 questions tonight and um, let's have a look at them. Uh, let me think, I've got to click this button. Um, I'm not doing this very well, am I, David? I think that'll work. Right, our, our first question uh, is from Bryce Adams. It's titled, It's Banned in Google. He said, I'm looking at getting an expired domain name, but according to dnprotect.com, it's banned in Google. Uh, also, when I Google site, full colon, uh, the uh, domain name.com, there are no results. Um, so this is not good and I should not get it, right? Absolutely right. Anybody else? Um, oh, sorry, were you about to? Oh, I was going to um, refer to Michael first. Martinez's answer. He answered questions, sort of few um, comments down in the sense that you, know, you shouldn't really rely on third party tools and you have to make your own judgment and you have to do your own due diligence background check as it were yeah I, I... The, the the question occurs to me is why do you want the domain name uh, does it does it match your brand or your client's brand which would be a good reason of having it um, if it's got some sort of key phrase in it well that's uh, not going to get you very far anymore so um, whether um, before you get to the to the question of whether it's a good domain technically uh, you need to ask whether it's good business wise um, and that that's going to be you know that and then you you've got the question of okay um, it's uh, the domain name.com uh, and it fits your your brand maybe well there are what about the uh, the dot co what about the dot net they're just as good for you. So, you know, th this fixation on particular domains, um, you know, maybe you shouldn't have that. Um, and then you've got the question of whether, uh, as Michael says, whether uh, the tool is telling you something that's worth knowing. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, so some, I, I had a scan down, I can't remember who said it, but someone said, have a look at it on Wayback Machine, um, see if there's anything that makes it look sketchy. Uh, has someone been doing something underhand with it? Um, you know, I, as I say, I, I'm, I'm just a bit 
dubious about your need for this actual domain um, with, with question marks over it. Go and get something else. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> uh, Bryce Adams um, sort of expands on it in a, in a comment says, you know, this domain, the expert domain, is a former competitor and still has some good backlinks. But he doesn't want it, you know, if they're toxic, the links are toxic, and um, drag him down. So I suppose <laughs> the plan is to um, obtain that domain and redirect to the existing site that Bryce has. I think that's the sort of the strategy he's looking at. Yeah. Mm. Excellent. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Um, let's move on to the next. Number two is um, a question. Uh, it's titled, does in inserting keywords in schema CADs help with ranking? Um, and Brenda Malone said that only if they naturally belong there, maybe in descriptions, don't obsess over it, though. One of the better answers we've seen are here. Um, yeah. Um, what do you think, guys? If, I mean, it's how it's done, isn't it? So if it's on page and you're marking it up, then uh, with you, know, you, you can mark things as keywords, um, as schema. Um, you could also do it in JSON OD. I think that's fine as well. Um, I'm not so sure whether it would help directly um, with the ranking, but as Amun Johns says, if you scroll down a little, um, it will help search engines to understand your site and your content better so in that sense being um what the right word um correct in your implementation will help but i'm not so sure it's going to be a huge factor and you probably shouldn't expect too much from it and getting it right is important Yeah. Okay. Two down, ten to go. Question three on our run list. Uh, it's titled canonical full colon abcd.com or abcd.com forward slash. Um, He said, my website is abc.com. Now, may I set canonical as abc.com or abcd.com slash? Um, yeah, do I have a volunteer to answer this one? I mean, full agreement with Rich Turn. Um, it doesn't matter. Um, and Buff or Booth Main says that WordPress will set it with a slash at the end yeah fine just go with it um yeah yeah the, the um the, the, having the slash in the url um it just uh, um gets rid of the need for for a second call to the server it's more efficient just in serving but it does and both both uh, with a slash and without a slash are uh, um, both the same, the same outcome. All right, let's go to the next, if there are no objections. Okay. Nathan Bradshaw asks question four. It's titled, do all the following link attributes have the same purchase purpose? Um, he said, means don't pass the link juice. Rail no refer, rail no follow, rail no opener. Um, 
I think we should scroll up to see what Michael Martin has said because you can, uh, if, if Michael Martin has writes the check, you can take it to the bank. Comments, Scott? Yeah, to answer the question, um, um, do they have the same purpose? No. Um, and um, only no refer, uh, sorry, only no follow really has the purpose that uh, Nathan suggested. That is to say that um, no follow indicates that the current document's original author publisher does not endorse the reference document. So that's according to MDN side. Whereas no opener and no referrer have different purposes and different uh, implications, which Michael describes. Thank you, Mr. Taki. Okay, rushing through these today. Ruben Nunez asked the question, it's number five on our run list, what is the process that I need to take uh, to get my pages indexed? Ruben said, um, hi guys, I have a question about indexing. I recently created a site and I've submitted my sitemap. The problem is Google Search Console is showing me that only a small portion of my site is indexed. Um, my most important content rich pages are not indexed at all. I, I see uh, it says um, discovered, um, uh, currently not indexed, status uh, excluded. What is the process that I need to take to hopefully get my pages indexed? Well, um, may, let's have a look at why um, why these pages have been discovered but not indexed. Um, it's a new site, but we don't know how new. Um, it might just be that uh, Google has... Um, has spidered the site and hasn't actually got round to putting it properly in the index. It could be that you wait a while and um, you will be indexed. Uh, the other thing I think, as Brenda Malone says, um, is you might have uh, created a, well, the opposite of what Brenda Malone says, you might have created a, a site with lots and lots and lots of content and Google has, um, has not got round. In fact, it's the same point as the uh, as my first point. Should have thought before I had my mouth. Um, the other the other thing is that strikes me is uh, this is a, a sign that you have uh, created um, pages that Google deems not worth indexing. Um, you're saying they're content rich. Um, what sort of content is it? Um, content rich tends to suggest that you've got lots of words on it. If you've got lots of words on it, Google should index it. Um, but if you've got it uh, full of video and audio and images, things that Google doesn't index, um, then your content rich, rich pages may not be of any interest to Google uh, because it can't do much with it. Um, so I think you need to have a look at your site. You need to have a, a think about your um, how long since you created the site. Um, otherwise, perhaps do some internal linking uh, to help Google understand the, the site more. Um, yeah, let's stop there. Um, I think 
you know, my, my biggest question is what, how good is your content? And is Google going to be interested in it? What else do we yeah. have? I think that's pretty, pretty much covers it. Um, David, that you? Okay, then let's have a look at number six on our run list. Nicholas de Dawson uh, asked a question saying, I'm trying to do SEO for YouTube videos. Ooh, good luck with that plan. Um, and the, the reason I said that, Nicholas, is because um, uh, dumb SEO questions is uh, uh, all videos and uh, it, it is a trial in, in giving it to be uh, noticed. Um, he said, my question is, uh, he said, do tools such as Google Ads Keyword Planner or Keyword Server uh, carry over the search volume to YouTube? Uh, are there any other tools you use to get search volume for YouTube keywords? All the best, Nicholas. David Gassad says AH Reps has a tool for it. Um, Trent Anerka said uh, Sem Rush and AH Reps have YouTube data. Um, having the data, of course, doesn't um, create the data. Uh, Nicholas uh, De Dawson said thank you. Um, Any comments from David or, or Mr. Taki? Not really. This uh, we, we had this a, a few weeks back, I think, and I admitted that this was not my area of expertise. Um, but the, uh, the the answers about the tools, I guess, um, are sufficient for um, for Nicholas's um, question, but. Uh, I, I have to put my hand up here. I, I can't help. Yeah, I don't know. Um, and the thing is, so much of YouTube activities happen within YouTube. So I'm not so sure how much external third parties can gauge what's happening within YouTube. Yeah. OK. We're on to number seven. Um, he said, I am in the process of uh, starting a website. So the journey begins. Um, Melinda Paulsell goes on to say um, an SEO domain question. Um, she said, I am in the process of starting a website emphasizing cheerleading exercise and injury prevention. I have purchased the domains cheerexercise.com and cheerexercise and injury prevention.com. Uh, um, keyword research showed higher volume for cheer exercise, whereas cheer and injury prevention has very little. I think cheer exercise.com uh, is the way to go but I, I want to hear um, um, other thoughts before proceeding also I was thinking of making the loader logo cheer X for short as it is a uh, nice play on cheer exercise uh, the domain for cheer x.com is taken but not active um, your thoughts um well we've got we're back to the uh f for the uh, exact match domain as it was idea um the um thinking about key phrases and search and um uh and domains is um hide into nothing um 
so you shouldn't be making the decision on on that um so you've got two things you've you've got what's easy to to remember and type in uh chair exercise and injury prevention.com will take you about 10 minutes to type in so that's not very good um it's also perhaps a little bit more difficult to remember but um if what makes your your business unique or at least um i imagine that there's quite a lot of uh, of um businesses websites in the cheerleading exercise space um maybe the injury prevention thing is what will make you unique make you stand out so maybe that's a, that maybe that's an argument for uh, cheer exercise and injury prevention.com um so that's two different um pieces of potential advice um the the logo cheer x um is okay um your main uh, your main problem is if cheer x is a is is owned by uh, a large corporation or someone with a lot of money and sees you uh, representing yourself as cheer x and takes a swipe at you legally uh with a uh um, was threatening to take to court so um cheer x sounds great fits with either of those um uh either of those domains um but you know i think you've i think you've again i am I'm, I'm back to taking a step back and looking at your business um and is it just cheer exercise are you in, insane cheer x are you dropping the thing that will make your business stand out which is potentially the injury prevention bit so um i'm not going to give you um a straight answer unfortunately um but i think you need to think about your business and i think you need to see if promoting the injury prevention part is going to give you um give you some advantage in the marketplace or at least give you a niche that you can um, you can exploit otherwise go for the short one yeah um yeah i see um, emma and johns i can't uh, ignore him uh, uh, he uh, writes on so many things um he said shorter is better there's a solid reason why there is amazon and not amazon online shopping google and not google search and answer engine and apple not apple computers and tech and so forth makes it easy to type easy to pass on etc love it all right let's go to number eight on our run list and it's uh, from fifi Otherbill. he said should i leave it to google to decide what to show hi guys he said uh, i need your help i'm trying to rank for all of these three pages but not too sure as you know what to do uh, for example www.website.com slash samsung one dash five dash air conditioner dash uh, for 10 and www.website.com slash samsung one dash five dash air space air conditioner inversa oh, goodness um question is should i leave it to google um to decide what to show um based on their searches or should, should i create a fourth page with all of these three products and use canonical URLs. And uh, why are we thinking about that? Christine Hansen, um, she said, she said uh, let me just stop that here. Um, she said, I'd go with one air conditioner on each page, um, perhaps with links to other similar products within the same brand slash series at the bottom of the page. 
Remember to use exact air conditioned product names and product numbers in the title and headline because this is what um, many customers will search for. That's a good answer. Would you agree, Dan? Massa? I mean, it depends, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> um, if you scroll down, you see answers from Richard and Jeff. Um, and it really depends on whether people, you know, what people are looking for and what you're selling. Are you selling the unit as the whole? So the air conditioning system with all its parts, or are you selling parts to repair people, for example, who may only be looking at the inverter or the mirror rather than the entire unit? So I think it depends on the purpose. Um, given the situation, I just will have three pages because it seems as if that these are aimed at three different uh, sort of different segments. So the unit and then as it were sort of parts, the people only looking for the parts, not for the entire unit, if that makes sense. So if someone's looking just for the part, then they're looking for the part, not for the whole unit. And therefore, it makes sense to have a separate page for that particular part, because that's what people are looking for. Um, and proceeding on that basis, I wouldn't create a fourth page because that's a you know, I think it's an unnecessary um, duplication of content. What purpose will it serve? It just doesn't seem to me particularly useful to do that. And if you start to mess around with canonicals, I think you're, you know, you're going to cause problems for yourself. I don't know what um, Thief is trying to do with canonicals. You know, which page is going to be the true copy or what content? So I wouldn't create the fourth page. I'll leave as they are and leave it to Google. One I, I'm with Jeff. I don't understand what uh, Fifi is selling. Um, it looks to me as if the first page could be the product and the two others might be parts of the product, but I don't know. Um, so the, the question, I think, as, as Massa said, is what do people look for? What do people buy? You know, particularly if... Um, you know, a conditioner inverter is something that goes wrong regularly and you, you uh, and, and people, you know, bite quite regularly. I'm sorry, I've got someone at the door. I'm going to have to uh, stop for a moment. Okay. Well, we've, we've lost um, David um, Masataki. Should I wait for, for him to return? Uh, well, um, can we add anything to this question? <laughs> well, I have nothing more to say. Yeah, well, I mean, to my mind, um, um, R14 and, and inverter, I don't know what mirror fit, where mirror fits and all that, but uh, R14 and, and inverter are types of um, air conditioners uh, and in answer to Richard Hearn's question on the screen um, he said um, are buyers searching for these separate keywords I'd say yes um, but, uh, let me just um, scroll back up yeah I mean so if they are separate things and people buying them separately, then having separate pages would make sense to me. Because if I'm looking for a converter or inverter, sorry, inverter, then I'm looking for the inverter, not for other bits and pieces. Yeah. The one thing I'd, I'd say for Phoebe is that Basically, we're looking at three pages on a site. Um, there's very little for Google to um, 
get a get a get a, a mouthful of uh, there. Um, you know, the three pages. It, it, it's not much of not much of a site. You've got to build more content, much more content, before you start to make uh, an impact and uh, um, get any sort of um, meaningful um, outcome from the work that you're applying. Micah Fisher Kirsch, the goodness. Hello, Micah. Hey, Micah. Hello, Micah. Hello. Ah, it's the man from Greenland. Uh, <laughs> it is really green, yes. <laughs> yeah. It's not always filled up ice. <laughs> so, for uh, people who don't know you, Micah, you, you're from the west coast of the USA. And um, you're the uh, um, moderator of um, a, a popular SEO meetup group in, in and around Silicon Valley, um, and the vice president for, for SEO um, um, for Turn River Capital. And um, I think I, I think I've got actually your your. Uh, CV, uh, it, it, it's a fairly long one. Um, so you've got to forgive me if I don't get it all in. Mm. How, how are the kids? They're doing well. I went a, a little up a little too early, sent them back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so. We had a classic here in in, in the southern hemisphere uh, uh, overnight. Jacinta Ardern, who you might or might not know, is the uh, uh, Prime Minister of New Zealand, and uh, she has um, uh, children. And she was on a um, a, a, a Zoom uh, meeting last night, and. Um, um, she was talking, um, and her, her, one of her children came in and wanted a drink of water. Um, very funny. Anyway, <laughs> all right. Um, let's let's roll on to the next question. Will, will, will we, Micah? Unless you had something that you wanted to add. Thank you. Right. So that's Rayid Odawa um, asked the question. It's titled "Competition is so low, but I don't have any traffic yet." Um, and so that said, "Hello, SEOs. Sorry if I'm sounding stupid. You're not. Um, feel free to um, um, describe this, your, your issue in any way you want." Um, this year in January, I began uh, search engine optimization work on my own blog. So I am a newbie in search engine optimization. My, my, my niche is not all that competitive as most of the main keywords have a keyword density of zero and at most three. Um, but I, I don't have any traffic yet uh, and, and the competition is so low in my niche. Most of the time I've been writing blog articles and doing on-page SEO. I can't afford backlinks, uh, so I have not been uh, doing any, and that's not a problem. Um, um, let me see. No, I can't get that to go up. Yes, I can. Um, Oh, I can't get much of that. Um, help me out here, guys. I'm drowning. <laughs> um, <clears throat> well, it depends on, you know, if you're not getting traffic, basically what you're, you know, you're also not, thus not ranking potentially then for those said keywords. Um, the question is, is, you know, if you've got a pretty new site, it may take some time. If you haven't generated, uh, 
information about it to Google, or the fact that you know your Google your 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 website may not be indexable to Google. There may be a ton of <clears throat> situations for what's going on. Um, you know, is your content considered better? It's not just hey, the difficulty is low and there's not much traffic, et cetera, but rather like how relevant is your content to said topic? Um, and are you being perceived as like uh, directly relevant or generating information that the user wants? So it's, it's kind of... Uh, it's kind of hard to say offhand for potentially some of the reasons uh, without kind of going through the site and, and seeing how the competitors are looking, but things generally to consider. Um, it, it, generally things to consider in the market is, is to ask like, um, you know, it, how relevant is the content versus what's already out there? Um, is Even if it's potentially low competition and there may be that these sites have been around for a bit regardless and so they're they've developed topical authority and plus some backlinks going to them that uh, you haven't developed yet um, and then just are there any technical issues that you've developed uh, that you're or not developed sorry but not are not aware of that may actually be limiting your growth The everything that Micah said, um, the, um, the other thing that occurs to me is why is competition low? Is it something so obscure that there isn't a lot of traffic to be had? Um, it would have to be something really obscure for that, but uh, it does um, it does occur to me that there there may not be uh, that much traffic to be had. Um, but I think it's more likely to be one of the things that uh, Micah uh, went through. But um, yeah, do do think about your your niche and um, whether there there are people out there who are also interested in it. Jim, uh, you're you're switched off. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, David Razan. Um, number 10 on our run list is titled the Penalty on Off Niche Off Topic Backlinks. Brad Brad Hika Nanda um, goes on to say, I see one of my clients competitors has put five thousand plus backlinks in various blogs in the last two weeks. His website is a technology website and he has put comments on various uh, niche blogs. Most of these comments uh, contain links of his website on adult keywords, which I cannot write here. It is a kind of black hat SEO. He was ranking between 8 to 10 on, on Google's first page. Now he is on second position and that has put me on third position. Now, doesn't Google make a penalty on such off-niche, off-topic backlinks? What can I do in such a case to get my ranking again at, at number two? So, <clears throat> does Google penalize? It can, but not... Uh, how to put this? It's not that getting off niche, off topic backlinks is bad. Now, going out onto sites and trying to get backlinks from poor neighborhoods or doing um, programs that violate Google's uh, guidelines, that will be harmful, but it doesn't mean that's going to happen quite right away. Um, so, and, and, I should say on top of that is that generally comments are often no followed on blogs. So those are not usually going to be the situation for uh, helping to improve said site. Um, 
<clears throat> so that's kind of the first and foremost. Like, uh, I, I would kind of question essentially whether or not those comments are what's leading to their improvement. In fact, in a lot of ways, if, if he keeps it up, there's a good chance that that's going to nuke the site. Um, if if it's seen to be, you know, said site doing that. Now, as to what you can do in the meantime, <clears throat> well, that's sometimes harder. Sometimes, you know, you don't want to be doing the same uh, tactics for starters. One, it may not be something that is actually helping the site. Um, and thus, you could, you know, get yourself into the same hole that eventually they'll get into. Um, the other thing is, is just trying to understand what else is there as a difference between what's been gone between your site and theirs. Um, is it actually them improving or your site being seen as less uh, valuable compared to, to what Google thought before? So those are some of the um, things to consider. I would go beyond kind of what is uh, what may look like the obvious and try to kind of dig deeper into finding um, either some on-site technical or maybe you know, even other backlink issues um, as to kind of a, it, that being a real cause for the changes that's going on. Thank you, Marga. Who's next? Um, again, everything that Micah said. <laughs> stop, stop, stop being controversial, Micah. Um, I, I, the the biggest thing here is for, for me is, is that um, I'm not convinced that these backlinks are the uh, are the cause, the driver for going between eight and ten and two. The other thing that strikes me is that um, websites go up and down in Google's ranking all the time. You know, it's it's just part of the way things go. Um, between eight and ten and two is, you know, not that big. Um, you know, it, it could be all sorts of things causing this. Um, and Having done 5,000 plus dodgy off topic backlinks, um, you know, it's not, it's, it could or could not um, cause the, uh, the, 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 uh, the website to, to tank uh, in some time in the near future. Um, <clears throat> You know the, the the topic of these. If 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 these are adult links going to non adult site, um, it's could be that someone is uh, trying to do some negative SEO uh, on it, or it could be that uh, their site has been hacked, and there's something going on in the 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 adult niche here that. Uh, that your uh, competitor might, uh, your client's competitor need, might need to, to know about. So I uh, I think there's potential for all sorts of mess ha happening for your client's competitor. Um, I wouldn't get tempted into um, setting up um, 10,000 plus backlinks to uh, compete with them. Uh, I think that's that's potentially going to get you into trouble or if it doesn't it's going to be a, a waste of uh, resources um so yeah uh, go back to what micah said it's uh, it's likely to be something else that's causing this thank you david all right let's um uh, roll on to number 11 on our run list from Ben Dadoon. It's titled that they are all similar but not exactly the same. Um, and Ben said, As time goes on, the more I understand the importance of understanding the right and exact user intent for a specific keyword. I posted a question a couple of days ago regarding choosing one or multiple blog posts for three slightly different keywords, and I got my answer. Um, my question now is, uh, what if uh, I have those relevant keywords? Um, 
I'm not going to try and read them all out, um, that they can be seen on the WCA Questions Facebook group. Um, ben goes on to say the intent here is pretty much the same. They are all similar but not exactly the same. What would you do? One, create one fat post slash page with 2,000, 3,000 keywords. Where I will choose, let's say, the most popular one, the shorter tail, is the H1 and use all the others. Each one is subheading H2 and mix them all up in that big article page. I'm not going to read out the rest um, because it can be read on, on the, the WCA Questions Facebook group and I'm probably just boring you with lists. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, while you guys are deciding uh, um, what your answer to this will be for Ben, um, my, my thing would be to, to say to Ben, um, don't try to make a, a big fat post page. Do what makes it best to, to, to convey your message. Um, don't don't for, force yourself to um accommodate a, 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 a set of conditions that, that aren't grounded in the, you know the real world and that aren't um, making something readable that have some information that you want to pass on uh, anyway guys go ahead yeah um hmm. i mean i think the first place to start is what the actual company does and what the clients um, ask for, because I think these are very different areas of consulting. I mean, you know, development is a very different thing from quality management system, even though it's usually the case that the same company provides the whole range of consulting. I think I think it really depends on what clients have historically looked for. Why did clients thus far engage this particular consulting ahead of others? And I think that's where I would start. What's the strengths? What's the specializations that this company has? And really build from there. Yeah, I, I would um, I would think along the lines of where where's the customer's pain to be classic about it. What is it they need? Um, what will they be searching for to sort out that need? And I like Massa think that there are things here that are different. They're probably bought um, at different times or by different people. So I would suggest that you have a medical device consulting page and you have possibly three, um, three pages, um, a development consulting, a strategy consulting and a quality stroke QMS consulting page um, I know development and strategy might go together but let's assume that there are separate things being uh, being bought at uh, different times um, so without understanding the the marketplace I don't think I've done anything with medical devices um, I would uh, I would think hard about how uh, how people, purchase these uh, uh, these services and match the the content to uh, what they're going to buy and when thank you David uh, anybody else Okay, this is our last question for the night. It's from Ed Summer. It's time to backlink from a website pointing to a non-existent page on my site. 
Um, Ed said, oh, I have a backlink from a website pointing to a non-existent page on my site. That page isn't really relevant uh, to my website anymore. So do I, A, add a redirect so that the link goes to the home page, B, add the page back to my website with some uh, uh, content that sort of fits, and um, changing the backlink is unfortunately not, a, not, not an option. Um, single backlink, most of the time, it's not going to be worth it. Uh, obviously, that depends on how valuable that said link is. So, <clears throat> I wouldn't worry unless it's going to create a huge extra boost to the to the site for, for where that link is coming from. Now, on the assumption that, let's say, it is, then the, then the question may be um, uh, redirecting it to at least the next closest page where possible. Um, and then if we're talking about a page that was a product, you can always put up a um, reason for why said information is no longer available and where you can, uh, where, what you, where you can go instead um as kind of a way to at least help with that uh but generally outside of it i would just you know either just forward it or just leave the page broken because it's just it's a single link thank you Mark. yeah I, I wouldn't uh i wouldn't uh redirect it to the home page um if it's likely to have some value to you uh then um, it doesn't take very long to put a 301 redirect in place. So um, I would do that, uh, redirect it to something of uh, similar content. Yeah, not A, I think that's the <laughs> answer. Um, but it's a question of how do you achieve B? Um, and it, it, I think Micah raised I think the crucial question you know is it worth it I mean is it does it really make sense and sometimes it might not and either placing a 401 or um, I don't know for a 404 410 would make sense in certain in certain circumstances so I don't think there is a um, a simple answer to this question but it's not a for sure Thank you, Mercer. All right. I think if um, there are no more items on the agenda, we'll call this meeting to a close. Um, I can't go without um, thanking, uh, um, firstly, you guys for, for, for turning up week after week um, and um, making uh, a dummy CEO question, such a, a, a valuable resource. Um, and um, also, uh, people like uh, Brendan Malone and Michael Martinez, uh, uh, people who answer questions through the week um, whenever um, questions are asked and providing um, fast, uh, oh, very ready uh, answers. Uh, and again, ma making dumb SEO questions such a, a valuable uh, resource. Um, yeah. Okay. So uh, I'll, I'll click this button. We'll be back at the same time next week to do it all again. Um, you know, what am I doing? I'm in the wrong place. No wonder it wouldn't work.